Charles Onyat with IGN, and I'm taking a look at the Guardian class, or, or profession as they're called in Guild Wars 2, one of eight in ArenaNet's upcoming MMO. This is a closed beta test. The game is supposed to go live sometime in 2012. And the way classes work in this game is the skills that you have active, so the skills over on the left side of my skill bar here, are tied to individual weapons. So what I have equipped right now is a mighty sword. It's a one-handed sword along with a shield, and I have a unique skill set because of that. Now if I equip a two-handed weapon, the great sword in this case, uh, you'll see an entirely new skill bar pop up, as well as this uh, blinding blade, which is the number five. I haven't quite unlocked it yet. The way it works... Uh, in Guild Wars 2 is once you acquire a weapon, you actually have to uh, attack and use the abilities attached to that weapon for a while to unlock the full set. It doesn't take very long, uh, but it's basically just a way, it seems, to get you familiar with the various skills that unlock on weapons while you're playing, so you're not totally totally lost, although there's quite a bit to learn, so uh, expect, if, if you're not a, a veteran MMO player, expect to be kind of lost when you start this game anyway. It is a very complex system. Um, oh, I'm getting attacked by a giant earth elemental. Anyway, I have a, an auto attack with my greatsword here, and the Guardian is all about giving buffs to others and doing kind of area of effect uh, bonuses and, and debuffs on enemies, uh, which you'll see in the symbol of Wrath, uh, if I can place that on the ground when I get near one of these elementals. Uh, it basically slams a symbol into the ground, uh, like that. Uh, that I should have up basically as, as frequently as I can because its bonuses include damage and it also reflects damage back at enemies. So that is useful to have uh, going in addition to the auto attack and this whirling blade attack that spins and does damage uh, while spinning, although that wasn't very successful. Um, and I also have a jump attack associated with uh, the greatsword. So this lets the Guardian uh, act a little more offensively so in this case I can slam the symbol onto the ground, or I could, assuming it wasn't still on cooldown, but there I, I use the spinning attack anyway to take care of those guys. Uh, one mechanic that stays consistent throughout uh, various weapons that are equipped are these F1 through F3 virtues uh, that are unlocked up here. Now these are persistent effects, so you can see them active on my character right now in these tiny little icons. I don't know if you can make that out. But uh, So those give me passive bonuses, like Virtue of Justice gives every fifth attack a, a burning effect, uh, Virtue of Resolve uh, lets me regenerate health, and Virtue of Courage uh, basically lets me block an attack uh, on a regular basis. Now I can also activate these abilities, so I can activate Virtue of Justice, which basically spreads the effect out between allies and myself so that uh, the next attack has a burning effect. Um, the downside of that is that once I, I use that, that effect disappears. You saw the icon just disappeared there, and I have to wait for the cooldown to come back. So that is my penalty uh, for, for uh, spreading out, I guess, uh, sharing the love <laughs> on, on those skills. Is I, I then have to wait for the, the cooldown to end before the effect is then activated once again. But once it is active, then it's a passive on my character once again. Um, and I have sort of these persistent bonuses that I can choose to share uh, at any time, which is kind of cool. Uh, so as soon as I kill this guy, I'll swap out weapon sets to do something else. There you can see me planting the symbol on the ground. Uh, can do a lot of damage in this mode. Uh, but if I switch over to, say, a one-handed sword... Oh, I'm still in combat. I'm going to roll out of combat. Every, every character can roll, by the way. There we go. It consumes uh, endurance over here. You can roll on the side, you can roll backwards, you can roll forwards. Uh, you just have to wait for the endurance bar to recharge after you do that. Um, I also have a heal. Uh, so I can heal uh, three different ways. I don't have all of the heals unlocked on this character, uh, but I can spend skill points to unlock the stuff. And skill points uh, are spent to unlock all of the stuff on the right-hand side. You can see some of these slots are locked. This one isn't. Uh, so I can actually go in and... Do I have enough? Yeah, I have three skill points right now, so I could... Uh, unlock this Sword of Justice, for instance. Confirm. There, I just spend skill points to unlock this guy. Uh, my seventh slot is open, so I can go over and drop the Sword of Justice in there. Uh, and this summons an Arcane Sword to defend me, so let's see what happens. There it is. I am now running around with a sword. It doesn't... Oh no, it will walk with me. <laughs> Come on, buddy. I like how it has a little leash hanging off the back of it. A little chain leash. So, if I get into a fight now, I should be able to... Oh, it disappeared. Alright, well I gotta wait for the cooldown for it to come back. Anyway, I can get a sword pet. 
Very nice. Um, but there, are, uh, I mean, if you saw on that menu, there are a ton of skills that you can unlock and swap in here. Eventually, you get elite skills. This is until level 30. Uh, that tend to be really powerful versions. But these up here, these are heals. So I have three different ones. I could unlock this one if I wanted to. Uh, but I'm going to stick with the base heal that uh, gives me uh, gives me health back. And the, and the idea of that, and because every profession in the game has a heal, it's so you don't necessarily have to have a dedicated healer class. So if you're heading into a dungeon or something like that, it's, you don't have to sit around and message people and be like, oh, we need a healer before we can even have a chance of doing this. Uh, everyone is survivable on their own, but everyone also does have different strengths and weaknesses. But the idea in Guild Wars 2 is for every class to be as flexible as possible so that you don't find yourself in those limiting situations where you feel like you can't, you simply can't do content because you don't have the right class mixture. Uh, so I'm going to bring in a shield and I'm going to bring in a sword. Uh, and now my skill bar has changed. So I now have a uh, basic auto attack. That's uh, pretty standard. But I also have a flashing blade, and this gives me a little bit more bo mobility uh, to basically teleport in and strike a target and blind them, uh, which I can follow up with something like uh, this Zealot's Defense, which blocks ranged attacks. So if I'm in melee combat with somebody uh, and there's somebody shooting arrows, I can trigger this, and that will block ranged attacks, and it will also deal damage while that's happening. I'm going to auto-attack this guy. I also have a Shield of Judgment, which uh, should knock him back. Well, no, it doesn't. It actually uh, it deals damage, though, um, as well as gives additional protection to me and allies around me and gives some damage reduction. Uh, and then, the, I'm sorry, the Shield of Absorption is the one that knocks, actually knocks people back. Uh, so I'm going to use that here. I'm going to start fighting this guy. Shield of Absorption. There we go. Got a knockback effect, and it also has the additional fact or effect of uh, absorbing projectiles. Uh, so that's basically with the sword equipped. Now I can modify this. So if I like, for instance, the Shield of Judgment and the Shield of Absorption, but I'm not so crazy about the Flashing Blade and the Zealot's Defense, I can bring in a mace, a one-hander. Uh, there are also two-handed hammers, but this is a one-handed mace. Um, and I, I will get a fresh uh, set of, of the first three abilities here. Now, the first one is just going to be a standard auto attack, but I get another symbol that I can drop on the ground. This one actually regens health for me. Uh, so that's a nice one to have around. You'll see there you, these green numbers are me regenerating health. Um, and then this third one is basically a counterattack. You see me the, my, holding my mace out like that. I was essentially waiting for someone to attack me. So maybe that will make more sense if I'm actually in combat. But you'll see a knockback effect if somebody does slam into me while I'm in that counterattack ready state. So I'm going to engage combat here. I'm going to plant a symbol on the ground. Um, and I am going to do this counterattack. There you can see hit while that was happening. And I do a kind of area effect blast. He should be dead pretty soon. Uh, so I have another offhand here that I can swap in. Uh, that's my inventory. That's my hero menu. Uh, I can put in... What do I have? I have a focus. So I can drop the focus in. I get another two unique skills here to pair with my mace. Maybe these work a little better. Uh, I have a ray of judgment uh, that can be shot, and it basically chains between targets um, and causes debuffs on enemies and bonuses on buddies. Uh, in this case, health regen for friends and blindness on enemies. Uh, and then I can initiate Shield of Wrath, which uh, blocks attacks, and if the shield isn't destroyed during the course of a battle, it will actually explode, uh, so it has an offensive kick at the end of it, which I'm going to put that up now. That is the shield wall. If this isn't destroyed uh, during this fight, there you can see uh, before its time limit was expired, it will actually blow up and deal additional damage. And here is the four attack, that's the ray. Uh, that creates uh, damage and as well as status conditions on everyone. So yeah, the Guardian is, is basically a team player from what I can tell. He, he does, he can deal damage, uh, but it looks like his, his main strength is uh, helping others when they're around. And I mean, from what I've checked out so far, he's a lot of fun to play. Uh, and what's really interesting is how many different... There we go, buddy. Dead. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so is, is how many different weapons he can use. He can use a huge range of weaponry, and like the, the warrior, who can also use a lot of weaponry, the warrior seems more about uh, damage dealing and mobility, whereas the guardian is more about uh, magic, magical abilities. He can use a sword, a hammer, a great sword, a mace, uh, and then he can use the scepter and staff, which you would traditionally associate maybe with caster classes, whereas the warrior can use uh, guns and bows and arrows. 
Um, so I, I obviously I haven't unlocked all of this, but you can actually go take a, a preview of your level 80 character, 80 is the cap, if you head into the PvP lobby, which is just right through this button, you hit this uh, right here, you go into the PvP lobby and you have kind of a, a level 80 skill set to play around with so you can test out uh, a, a fully unlocked uh, skill set, uh, which is good in case you're not really sure which direction to go. But experimentation is part of the fun. Um, and hopefully that gives you uh, an overview of how the Guardian plays. This is obviously pretty low level, so it's going to change quite a bit from here until late game. Um, but that is the Guardian for now in Guild Wars 2. And for a look at more classes in the game, or professions, I should say, as well as the PvP system and more, you can check out IGN.com or IGN's YouTube page.